Here we will address the innervation of cranial nerve 7, the facial nerve. Draw the left half of a face and label its upper and lower parts. Then draw the bilateral cerebral hemispheres. Next, draw the left facial nucleus and divide it into its upper and lower divisions, which innervate the upper and lower face, respectively. Show that the upper division receives bilateral corticonuclear projections and that the lower division receives contralateral projections only. This difference is highly clinically important, as we will see in the following two case vignettes. Number one, patient presents with inability to force a smile on the left with preserved ability to close the left eye. Redraw the cranial nerve 7 arrangement. Indicate that the left upper face is strong, but the left lower face is weak. Preservation of strength to the left upper face tells us that the left facial nucleus remains intact. Cortical innervation to the left lower face comes from the contralateral cerebral hemisphere, so show that contralateral upper motor neuron innervation is damaged as commonly occurs from cerebral hemispheric stroke. Note that it is the ipsilateral cortical innervation that maintains cortical innervation to the upper face. Number two, patient presents with inability to force a smile on the left and inability to close the left eye. Redraw the cranial nerve 7 arrangement. Indicate that both the left upper and lower face are weak. Innervation for the left upper and left lower face synapses within the left facial nucleus. So show that injury to the lower motor neuron or nerve, called Bell's palsy, will cause a complete ipsilateral facial palsy. Note the following two clinical pearls. The palpebral fissure may be wider and the nasolabial fold may be flatter on the affected side of the face due to lower facial weakness. Forced smile, such as drawn here, has contralateral cortical innervation, whereas involuntary smile, such as from laughter, has bilateral and separate cortical innervation and therefore is commonly preserved in a cortical hemispheric stroke. This concludes our diagram.